I'm Shachar Razani, and welcome to this very special episode of Eye on Israel. Iron Sword's war following the horrid October 7th Hamas massacre has taken its toll on Israel and Israelis. For the past almost nine months, Israel has been battling dark forces of terror in Gaza and Lebanon, as well as has been exposed to immense cruelty and trauma on a recurring manner conducted against innocents by vile Hamas. This includes 120 hostages who are still being held by the evil terror group, innocent people who'd been kidnapped from their beds on a Saturday morning just for the crime of being Jewish and Israeli. In the face of much need in Israel, there are those who could not keep quiet and decided to act to support Israelis during these harrowing traumatic times. Today, I am joined by such great people. Leah Peskin is an ardent supporter and lover of Israel, and her nephew served with the Israel Defense Forces. Leah actually started a foundation in memory of her, of her beloved son Gavin, who lost his life to PTSD. Leah's foundation trains clinicians on a specific, highly efficient treatment for PTSD. A few years ago, we remember IDF soldier Itzik Saidian, who set himself ablaze because of his PTSD. And it was then that Leah knew that she had to do something. Leah, thank you so much for joining us on JBS to share the story and the inspiration. I want to start with the Saidian story. You heard about the story. What did you do following that story? Well, I have a friend, Barbara Fix, and we both just thought that what happened was miserable. But we also thought that was much bigger than, than this just one soldier. And we knew that because Israelis face such terror on a daily basis, not just uh, during this war, but long before it, rockets all the all the time coming in. That that there had there must be a very large percentage of Israelis that have PTSD. We were sure of it, and so we decided that we needed to try and find a way to disseminate a very effective treatment for PTSD in Israel. And that was long before October seventh, correct? Two years ago, it was two years ago. And two, two years ago, I, I decided that I would research um, this whether or not this certain therapy existed in Israel. And I found out that it didn't very much and that there was one person. Well, there were two people who knew about it very effectively, Jonathan Hubbard and Danny Derby. And they were strong supporters of evidence-based treatment, which is what this is. And so I reached out to Dr. Derby and I asked him if he would help implement a training program for CPT in Israel. Now, in addition to and reaching wh out- what to is CPT for the sake of our viewers? CPT is Cognitive Processing Therapy. It's a, so a, mes a method of Socratically questioning the trauma that people have in their brains. It requires two days of formal training and then 20 weeks of supervision as you're treating patients who have trauma. It's been researched a lot and it's been proven very, very, very effective. Now, in my my foundation in the United States, the woman that does the training for me is a trauma expert renowned in the country. And her name is Katie Dondonville. And very early on, Katie joined forces with us to see how we could better implement this training. And she's been step by step with us the whole way from two years ago when we decided we really needed to do this. And it took a while to put it all together. So you actually identified this special therapy and you knew that it's both efficient and that it's not on the ground in Israel. How did you know that? Yes. Well, I, I reached out to people who told me that it, it, you know, I asked, I went around, I said, does CPT exist? And someone said prolonged exp exposure exists a little bit, although not that much, but that very few people knew it. And the one person that knew it was Dr. Derby because he had been trained by the creator of CPT and Jonathan Hubbard, who runs a cognitive behavioral training programs out of Hebrew University. So Dan, when I reached out to Danny, I said, Danny, will you help me? He immediately got Jonathan involved and he got someone from the Ministry of Health involved. And I got my trainer involved, Katie Donovan, and we tried to hash out a plan to implement this treatment. Now, you have to understand, Shahar, this is a short-term treatment. You can do it in 12 weeks. People get better. You can do it in two weeks. Wow. People get better if they do it a lot. People get a lot better. 
And it's been researched in the United States as being proven effective by many, many people. So we knew it worked. We just had to find willing partners to help us implement in Israel. And boy, did we ever find willing partners yeah. to help us implement. You know, Jonathan the, uh, and Danny have been amazing. Amazing. And we're going to be speaking with both of them in, in a minute. But um, I just want to ask you, for a lot of people, you know, I want to I wanna just talk about your passion and the source of inspiration for doing this. Because, you know, supporting Israel is one thing, donating to Israel is another. But entering into the quagmire that is Israel's bureaucracy demands another kind of Herculean effort. So where does that strength come from? What is it the basis, the foundation of your passion? I, I would say, Shahar, I'm a never give up, never say die kind of person. Right. I, I climb the mountain until I get to where I need to be on the mountain. And I just won't give up for something that's really, really important. And I really, really felt this was important because the thing is, if people get this treatment, they really, really get better. And all of Israel has PTSD now, not just right. the soldiers. Not just the families of the soldiers, everybody has PTSD. And so I really felt it was really important to do this. And, and really my, 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 my mission is to be sure that this exists in Israel for everybody so that they can have the treatment they need to get better. Israelis have suffered enough. They've suffered a lot. We can't change the facts but we can help the outcome. And that's really what this is about. So, so to ask you for your long-term vision, what's your vision for Israelis based on all of these efforts uh, at the moment? And how do you see it five years down the line? Okay, well, my vision is that every Israeli that needs help who has PTSD will have someone available who's been trained to help them. And that means that many, many, many more therapists need to be trained, although a, a, a Herculean effort has already been underway and Dr. Derby has already trained 300 people and we've got people signed up all over the place. And he's going to talk more about the people that have come to him and Dr. Hubbard. But my, my vision, my mission is to be sure that anyone who needs help gets help in Israel and they get it through the right channels through the HMOs, through centers of excellence, it doesn't matter where, that they are able to get the help they need so that they heal. Because I want Israelis to heal. Right. I don't want them to be suffering with this forever. My son suffered, and he didn't get the opportunity to heal, and so I want everyone else to have it. You're incredible, Leah. Um, truly incredible to hear your story. And your action, true to your word and true to your mission, um, thank you for the great gift. And to think that you started this years before October 7th introduced himself. Oh, my God. Thank uh, God we did. Thank, thank God, because we were ready when October 7th happened. We were just about ready. And right. thank God we started it two years ago. You know, thank God and thank Leah Peskin. Thank you so much, <laughs> Leah, for your words of empowerment oh, and inspiration. You're very welcome. It's truly you're a pleasure to welcome. listen. And hopefully many of our viewers who watch you now will be inspired to take similar actions in various fields to make our world a better place. Shahar, thank you so much for hearing my voice and for allowing me to speak on behalf of this training and the wonderful people who have done it in Israel. Indeed. Joining me now are two great partners of Leah's on the ground in Israel. Dr. Danny Derby, Director of Cognetica, the Israeli Center for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and Jonathan Huppert, who is a professor of psychology, the Sam and Helen Beber Chair in Clinical Psychology, founder of the Trauma Recovery Initiative at Hebrew U, and a clinical psychologist who is an international expert in cognitive behavioral therapy for anxiety and related disorders. Jonathan, Danny, such a pleasure having you with us uh, today on JBS. The pleasure as well. So I'll start with, um, you know, one of the th sad realities we've seen in Israel are the implications of the war. Only recently we we've heard of yet another IDF soldier, um, Eliran Mizrahi of blessed memory, who um, committed suicide after having received yet another um, order to um, join in reserve duty. We've seen other sad cases in Israel, and the kind of work that you do is of great importance. I want to start by asking you, um, describe a little bit of, Leah mentioned, you know, how innovative this therapy is. Um, let me start with you, Danny. Did it not exist in Israel before? 
Well, you know, there have been many attempts to uh, disseminate the evidence-based pra practices in Israel. Uh, but I can say before uh, Jonathan's initiative of the, of the IAPT, actually evidence-based treatments for PTSD and other disorders didn't really uh, had a strong gra grasp in Israel. Can you explain a little bit, you or Jonathan, what is it exactly? What is evidence-based therapy um, for PTSD? Evidence-based practice for PTSD is a, are trauma-focused uh, treatments that ask the patient to both uh, confront their memories about the trauma, to tell the narrative, and to process the emotions that they're experiencing while they tell the narrative. Uh, and this can be done. There are a number of different procedures that this is really common to all of them. Um, and uh, so cognitive processing therapy does this through a lot of uh, dialogue with the patient to really inquire and get them to uh, really self-reflect about the way that they think about things in order to break down those thoughts and then reveal the underlying emotions and to break down the the guilt and shame to get at the more primary primary emotions of fear and sadness that often underlie uh, the, the guilt and shame. You know, Danny, Leah mentioned that when she decided to move forward with this vision, she found you. How did that come about? Well, uh, Leah had uh, worked with Patty Rizik, who developed the cognitive processing therapy technique. And uh, when Patty reached out to me and said, uh, there's a great woman, a lover of Israel, who wants to support and create a, a training program for clinicians, for me, this was something that was, you know, out of the ordinary. I can say I came back to Israel from the U.S. Uh, more than 20 years ago, and creating such services was was something that uh, I thought was very important and, and wasn't easy to create within the existing frameworks. And now through this project, you're able to create, and the first phase was training of trainers. So you have been training. How many people have you trained already? in this uh, unique so, uh, kind so, of therapy. So, you know, I can say we started with a small group of 20 uh, supervisors, and these are people who have, have been actually trained in cognitive therapy and, and had experience, and we trained them in cognitive processing therapy for PTSD. And we did this in these two years that we were getting ready to launch the project. And actually, you know, when October 7th hit us, we were about to launch. We were actually launching, I think it was around the 27th or the 28th of October. So wow. we actually had the training start earlier. Talk about opportune. And, yeah. Yeah. And and we had those supervisors already ready, you know, because they were trained. And and once, you know, October 7th ha happened, we, we just started training as many people as, as we can from the HMOs in Israel, from the Ministry of Health, the hospitals, the military, the police. And, and we ended up training 340 people already in, in a really brief time. And uh, this was made possible through Leah's you know, generous donation. And, you, you know, and, and the, the meaning of that is, you know, we are creating services in Israel in places that you could not get these services before. You know, one of the, I think the amazing thing of this project is, you know, you can have clinical excellence centers, but then it's a center and you have to, you know, it's in a specific place. What we're doing is we're training people, you know, within the HMOs. That means that the services can be reached in Beersheba and in Tiberias and in Eilat. So this is the great thing about this project. So, Jonathan, you know, Danny is mentioning scale. Talk a little bit uh, more about scaling this project and making it, you know, one of what, what I see from my vantage point is the great advantage of this project, be, be making this kind of therapy accessible all over Israel, because just like you say, all Israelis have suffered immense and continue to suffer immense trauma as a result of October 7th. So it really requires a uh, planned out agenda to train trainers and then train therapists and identify the therapists who can become trainers and, and to uh, keep training more therapists. Um, and at the same time, also to be developing technologies to facilitate 
all of that, the training and the administration of the treatments that for, for patients and for therapists and for the supervisors, and also to be able to have uh, an interface, a dashboard that helps people track everything in a way that will allow uh, for, for patients and, and therapists to really have easy access to the materials that are necessary to do uh, the cognitive processing therapy and then and also to be able to monitor their symptoms. Uh, and so we're working on developing technology application and app, as well as uh, web-based as, and also continuing to train therapists and to identify the strongest therapists to then make them supervisors and to then identify the strongest supervisors to help out Danny to do more and more trainings. So to me, um, I, ha I have to ask you something that I'm sure many of our viewers are thinking. If we're talking about such a, such a successful kind of therapy, that's very much in need. And Leah mentioned before the fact that it's, you know, you're able to actually see results. Um, how come we haven't had it before to this extent? And why was this pioneering effort so needed? Explain that a little bit so that we understand where it's coming from. You know, I can say when Leah reached out to me, you know, my thought was, you know, in order to make this sustainable, right. you, you know, we, we need to have it within a system that we we have that have experience. And, you know, Jonathan's project was already working in training people in cognitive therapy. And, and the idea was to connect it with this project, you know, and make it you know, spread as much as possible. Right. And Jonathan was, you know, I think Jonathan, your project was really making this happen, you know, before to anxiety disorders and 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 and, and other disorders. And and you know, at least when Leah presented her vision, you know, the way I saw it, this is the the only way this could be successful is to connect it with the Ministry of Health and with the you know project that Jonathan is leading at the Hebrew U. That's, tell us a little bit about that project, Jonathan. So we actually uh, embarked on this eight, almost nine years ago in terms of working on disseminating evidence-based treatments for anxiety and depression, including PTSD and OCD and other disorders, uh, starting with a pilot of just 40 people. And then actually because of COVID, we added another 100 people where we trained them in internet-based interventions in particular. And then in the last three years, we identified another cohort of people in the public sector, all in the public sector, who um, we started training and um, that each of them in one of 23 different clinics throughout the country, as Danny said, all the way from the north to the south and and, and the periphery and in between. Um, and actually after a year of training those 123 therapists, we did a needs assessment. And one of the things that we identified was that they were treating a lot of PTSD and not feeling that they had the skills they needed fully to do so. Uh, that they'd gotten, they'd started to acquire cognitive behavioral therapy skills, but there's some specific skills dealing with trauma. To go back to also to your other question, one of the reasons that evidence-based treatments for PTSD are so hard to disseminate is that it's hard actually for the therapist and the patient to, to choose to, to listen to the trauma narrative and to really get into that, that hard place uh, of the trauma. It, it's very effective when you do so. And you need warm, empathic therapists who can create safe spaces to do so. Uh, but it's hard. Uh, and it's hard on the therapist and it's hard on the patient. And, and, and that's one of the reasons that it's, it was hard to do. But we had already identified before, as uh, as Danny and Leah had said. And so um, we, what we're doing now is we're, we're trying to uh, take advantage of this horrible situation in terms of being able to uh, there being more and more knowledge that, again, the, the whole society has been traumatized and the needs for uh, short-term evidence-based treatments are, are more than ever. Even before the 7th, there was great burden on the public mental health system, and it's just increased even more. There are places that have wait, waiting lists from a year to two years, uh, and without short-term evidence-based treatments that can help uh, provide uh really an answer to this, there's, the wait list will just accumulate even more. Right. And so uh, we're working on training therapists and we're, uh, we've actually started to create a center for uh, training 
and for uh, developing an ap applications and technology and doing a campaign. We're also working on translating two uh, books from English that recently were published, two self-help books uh, that um, we're going to translate and adapt to Hebrew and to the Israeli culture. Uh, and to do a whole campaign so the public is aware about these evidence-based treatments and so that uh, people who can benefit from self-help through books can do so, and so that people who could benefit more from internet-based technologies can do so, and that therapists will be trained throughout the country in doing so as well. And so uh, we, we're fortunate to have started really with Leah, who really lit the fire for all of this with her initial contribution, and, uh, and the Jewish Federation of North America and the UJA, uh, and the, the day after fund have all now contributed. And so we're able to, we've got, and we're doing this all in collaboration with the, the HMOs and the Ministry of Health. And so we're, we're working on really doing a large initiative. Our goal is in the next two years to train another 500 therapists in evidence-based practices for PTSD. And, and also to go beyond just PTSD, because we know that trauma affects people in so many different ways. Right. It affects people through depression, through anxiety, through insomnia, through chronic pain, through bereavement and grief. Uh, and all of those actually have evidence-based treatments that can be helping them. And unfortunately, they're not widely known here and in many places in the world, but also in particular in Israel. Right. Some of that's also due to cultural historical reasons, but now there's... I think a, a great need, and there's also an awareness, and so uh, we're we're trying to do our best to to help provide whatever we can to to really help uh, alleviate the tremendous suffering that's going on. And right at the at the necessary time for Israelis, uh, Danny, do you have any concurrent example about using this treatment? in recent times in Israel and its effect, maybe to give a sense for our viewers about you know, the way it's done and its success. You, you know, I, I can give an example of a you know, young commander who lost uh, soldiers uh, in one of the battles. In and, Gaza? You know, in, yeah, and initially, you know, he did not, you know, I can say he did not want to uh, get out of his house and, and uh, uh, through therapy, you know, especially working on, on guilt-related issues uh, for losing his soldiers, you know, he was able to recover uh, through the therapy that we provided. And, you know, it, initially, you know, going out more and more out of the if, out of his house and it, it, through the end, you know, returning to service. Well, you're talking um, about something that really happened fast. You know, we tend to think of trauma treatment as something that can take years to show effects and be helpful. And here you're giving us an incredible example. You know, we're talking about 12 weeks. You know, people can recover, as, as Leah said, people can recover in less than 12 weeks. There's actually a shorter delivery of the therapy. Wow. But we're talking about 12 weeks that people can recover and, you know, we see that over and over again with people, you know, once they get the, the right therapy, they can recover quickly. And this is so important to get these therapies available, right? you know, now and not in 10 years or 20 years or 15 years uh, uh, from now when people suffer and, you know, and lose their lives on, on the way. Right. So, and what you do now through this project is making these services accessible to as many people as possible. And when you say supervisors, you mean training of trainers. Right. And, and you know, this, if, if I can say to me, this is the great thing about this project. And this is through Leah's generosity and through Katie's Dondonville vision about that. Because we are not about being the experts. We want to raise experts. We want to have as many experts as possible. So, you know, as many people can get these therapies out where they're needed. Right. So I'm going to ask the both of you the same question that I asked Leah at the end of our short talk, which she insisted would be short. Um, what is your long-term vision for Israel and Israelis? Let's say, what do you want to see in five years from now? Maybe Jonathan, will start with you. Sure. Uh, I, uh, in five to 10 years from now, I'd like to see evidence-based practice uh, throughout the mental health system, the public mental health system, be the default that is offered to people, uh, children, 
adolescents, adults, elderly, uh, that there be triage systems in place that help uh, really coordinate care in a way that allows people and that the public be aware and, and be asking for these treatments as well. Very good. Danny? You know, I think Jonathan and I share the same vision. I personally think that having good public services is important. And, and, and you know, part of my childhood was in Tiberias. And, and the fact that you can get in Tiberias good evidence-based therapy is amazing. Amazing. You know, and, and important. From Tveria to Dimona and beyond. Incredible. Right, right. Incredibly um, inspirational to speak to you both. Your, uh, the work that you do is nothing short of holy, and the fact that you started it years before October 7th even happened is, um, is a great miracle for all of us and for the State of Israel. I'd like to thank you, Danny and Jonathan, your support and work on the ground as you fight not just the bodies for Israelis, but for the soul of so many people out there after and in the course of the traumatic events of this terrible war. Thank you for joining us on JBS. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you for having us. And to all of you, our viewers, thank you for watching as we continue to hear some better news coming outside of Israel and news that may be relevant, not just for Israel, but for the world entire. Looking forward to seeing you next time as we cast yet another fascinating eye on Israel.